Hey everyone, it's Rosalind. I am so glad you're here to garden with me. Today I am going to plant some gorgeous new flowers into the cottage garden and I wanted to bring you along for it. Um, to me, the cottage garden should be completely filled to the brim with plants, but I have some empty spots here and there and I want to fill it with these plants. So right in here, it's nicely filled in, but then as you can see towards the front, it's like just here and there, there's empty spots. Right in here, there's a spot and then along the front, there's a few spots that need to be filled in. If you're new here and you haven't seen any of my previous videos, um, so we have a cut flower farm and in this garden, I'll show you in just a bit, we have all of our cut flowers, but along the edges of the whole cut flower garden, I have my cottage garden. I am currently working on completely filling this space and then when I'm done with this space, I'm going to work on the rest of the cottage garden. The cottage garden runs along here and all along the edges. And then right in the middle of the cut flower garden is where we grow some of our vegetables and all of our cut flowers for the cut flower farm. So I'm going to give you a look at these gorgeous plants and then I'm going to get them placed into the cottage garden, get them planted, and then I'm going to give you a tour of where everything ended up at. And then there's also something beautiful that is blooming in the cut flower garden. I want to give you a peek at it. First up is the incredible blush smooth hydrangea. These flowers are actually aged a little bit already. Um, let me see if there's maybe a newer flower. Here's a newer flower. Oh my goodness. It's just this beautiful soft blush color. Um, here's a look at the tag. These do get, let me see. It says these can get four to five feet tall and wide. So this will be quite the statement piece in the cottage garden. And I also would like to use it in flower arrangements. Next is this double echinacea. It's called double coated butter pecan. And here echinacea can get quite tall. Um, in Northern Indiana, I think it's just favorable for them. Like they actually do reach the close to 30 inch mark. Next up is this lupin. Oh. I absolutely love lupins in the cottage garden. If you have a cottage garden, you need this flower. It's also great to use in bouquets. Another one that you need in your cottage garden is the delphinium. Delphinium is something, I don't know if it does it everywhere, but here in Northern Indiana, um, like towards late summer, we get a second flush of these flowers. Oh, they're just beautiful. Then I have a sedum that has this purple foliage and it gets these gorgeous, pink flowers, late summer, early fall, called cherry truffle. Another plant that is very easy to grow and is perfect for the cottage garden is a daylily. And this is actually a double flower. And it has like a soft, creamy peach color. Oh, it'll be beautiful in the cottage garden. I'm thinking that I want to place the incredible hydrangea right here beside the garden shed. I think it would be beautiful if it would fill it in right here but I have a poppy planted right there. So I might have to transplant the poppy so I can place the hydrangea there. I believe that's what I'll do. All right, let's get everything placed where it'll go, plant it into the ground, and then I'll give you a tour. everything planted and I am loving how it's turning out. So I apologize if I look a little flushed. Um, here in northern Indiana it's it feels a little warm. We have 85 degrees Fahrenheit with 90 percent humidity and it and it makes one sweat <laughs> especially when planting. Anyhow let's take a look at where everything ended up at. First of all before we look at the other plants this is what I wanted to show you in the cut flower garden. This is a pink peony poppy. Oh my goodness, if you can get your hands on seeds like this, you need it in your cut flower garden. And back to where all the plants ended up at. So I had originally placed the double echinacea right in here, but I was afraid it would kind of clash with this peach rose. Um, but I really wanted it here because I have a yellow echinacea there and then a white one. And then I thought that yellow would look nice, but 
anyhow, it ended up on back here. Behind the garden shed is where the daylily ended up at. So I have a peach kind of apricot daylily right there, pretty much the same color as this one I planted today. So I thought, you know, it would draw the interest over here. And then I have another daylily right there. And they're pretty much all the same color. And I thought it would be nice, like, if this would kind of cascade out over the pathway. So I still have some room to bring low-growing plants right in here. The lupin ended up right beside this daylily. I thought that would bring some nice early summer interest to the garden. And this is where the double-coated echinacea ended up at. So I have, over here by our birdhouse, I have quite a few echinacea in there. And I thought it would kind of draw that interest over into here and this is backed up by some daisies butterfly weeds and penstemon and a butterfly bush that will bloom like mid to late summer and again there is more room for some low growing plants right in here i have a but or a blueberry bush right in there and the delphinium ended up in the back of the bed right beside this butterfly bush i have a delphinium and it bloomed so beautifully just a few weeks ago then I have another one right here that's just getting ready to bloom. And this is the one that we planted today, right behind a phlox that's just getting ready to bloom as well. So I just thought this would be a nice trio of delphinium. And once these all fill in, oh, it'll be beautiful. This is where the poppy ended up at that I transplanted. It's right behind this daylily. And I have a David Austin rose that will completely fill in the space. It gets up to five feet tall. I thought that trio would look so beautiful together. Coming from this direction, so I have two sedum right there, and I thought this purple sedum with the pink flowers would look so beautiful together once that fills in. And then I have a white dinner plate dahlia right here, which will grow quite tall. And this is where the incredible hydrangea ended up at. So it does get four to five feet wide. I left about two feet of space all around it to give it plenty of space to fill everything in. It'll probably come up to about there. Now there's still a few empty spots here and there that need to be filled in. I'll just have to get more low growing plants so this cottage garden can be completely filled with plants. If you have any suggestions on plants that I should be adding to my cottage garden, please drop it in the comments below. I would love to read your suggestions. I hope it's been fun and inspiring for you to see these summer flowers being added to the cottage garden today. Thank you for gardening with me. I will see you in the next video. Have an amazing day. Bye.